And at the moment, I'm going to hand over to Scott. Thanks very much, Steve, and good afternoon, ladies and gentlemen. Um, in the short period of time I've got, I just want to touch on four things. Uh, firstly, give you uh, our house view on where we think the stock market's going to head by the end of this year. Uh, what in particular is going to drive the life science sector, which is the area that I spend most of my time working on. Uh, what we look for uh, when we recommend investments in that sector to clients, uh, and how we tend to play that sector. Uh, what are the sort of tricks and uh, rules we tend to use. Uh, so st just starting off very quickly, our house view at RBS Morgans is that the ASX um, 200 by the end of this calendar year will be at 4,800 points. It closed the March quarter up 0.7% at 4,300. So we're expecting at least a 10% gain between now and the end of the year. Our view is that uh, we think, we're keeping a careful eye on Europe, but we think the worst is over there. So uh, we think that the banks will recapitalise. Um, there'll still be a few ups and downs, but, but we believe we're over the worst of it. Uh, the second um, global comment we have is that we think the US recovery is intact and will continue to gain traction. So we've seen the US market uh, improve over the last 12 months and we think that will continue. Uh, the third and important point on China is they're currently engineering a property sector correction. Uh, which we will believe that will result in a soft landing in China. So our GDP forecast for China for this year are 8.5%. Uh, and that's a, a pretty good uh, growth rate, um, albeit lower than what China's achieved previously. So against that backdrop, uh, we're confident that the ASX 200 will hit 4,800 by the end of the year. To do that, we need a couple of things to happen in the Australian market, and that is that the four major banks uh, continue to maintain their position and and improve their share price. And the two big miners, BHP and Rio, um, have performed poorly over the last 12 months. Our view is that will reverse over the next six months. Uh, so that's, uh, that's our sort of house view on the overall market. Um, in terms of the life science sector, um, if we look at what's happened uh, over the last quarter, uh, the BioShares index has improved 9%. So if you compare that with the ASX 200, which was up 0.7%, uh, the biotech sector has done extremely well over the last quarter. And that's on the back of three negative quarters from last year. So it's really improved significantly over the last quarter in Australia. Uh, and we are getting a lot more inquiry into the space. If we compare that with what's happened over in the NASDAQ, uh, the biotech sector over there has had a phenomenal run. Um, for the last quarter, the NASDAQ was up 18%, and that was on top of a, a, an 11% gain for the December quarter. There's been a lot of acquisition activity in the US. Uh, some big names have been uh, merging, and that's really what's driven a lot of that uh, improved performance over there. So Gilead um, uh, taking over the Pharmacet assets. Uh, Bissell-Myers Squibb have uh, bought uh, in Tipitex. Uh, and Regeneron had some very good uh, F, uh, uh, approval for their eye drug data. Those sorts of things have really helped um, the US market. If we relate that back to Australia, there's not as much M&A activity happening over here, but what we are seeing in Australia is a number of the life science companies really mature. Uh, so that 9% gain that we got over the last quarter was driven by a couple of companies. Uh, for example, Mesoblast got their regulatory uh, clearance uh, to start a stem cell trial for type 2 diabetes. Uh, Star Pharma has had a very good run. They've announced the start of two thre phase three trials for their product. Pharmaxis, um, over the last month, has uh, uh, seen its share price rally about 40%. And that was on the back of uh, PBS listing in Australia for its key product and the imminent launch of its product in the UK and Germany. And then finally, Biota's also had a very good run in its share price following uh, positive phase two results for its HRV program. Um, so the sector in Australia has matured nicely and that's been reflected in increasing share prices. So in terms of what we're looking for for the next quarter in this sector, there's a couple of major events we're expecting to happen. <coughs> um, ACRUX uh, have filed for a, a, a patent extension uh, for their key product and we expect that to come through. Alchemia is looking to, to demerge its uh, oncology business from its uh, 
um, from the Paranox business, and we think that'll be very positive for the share price. You're going to hear next from Nick Wolf, who's uh, from uh, Phylogica. We're looking for a couple of uh, pharma collaborations there. That share price has done well over the last week. Tissue Therapy is looking for C mark approval uh, for their wound healing product. Uh, Sunshine Heart hopefully will get their uh, C mark approval for their um, heart assist device. And finally, uh, Curax Pharma on the 25th of June will hopefully have their key drug approved by the FDA. So it's going to be a big quarter in Australia for <coughs> uh, the life science sector. If all these um, uh, milestones come to pass, uh, I think we're going to see a very uh, strong performance, probably outperforming the, a number of other sectors. So how do we play the sector? Um, I've seen the most money made from investors who take a number of positions across uh, the better run companies. They basically have a core position and then around that core position they uh, trade the milestones. So basically a lot of companies are very good at uh, highlighting what they expect to happen over the next quarter, over the next qu uh, two quarters. And around those events, usually the share price will anticipate and uh, hopefully move up. And I've seen good money made by trading those milestones. But if you keep your core position, um, and then just trade those milestones. Uh, and, and also, don't get too emotional with any of these investments. If something's not working, uh, cut your losses and move on to something else. A couple of rules of thumb we tend to use when uh, looking at the life science companies. Uh, what we've found over a long, fairly long period of time is that uh, clinical trial costs or development costs uh, are always underestimated. So when we get presented with uh, costs for trials, we usually double it. Um, we tend to delay uh, clinical trial programs by about 12 months. Uh, and then when we start forecasting revenues or giving revenue forecasts, we usually divide those forecasts for the first couple of years by five. That's our basic rule of thumb that we use. <laughs> Pretty harsh, but that's the reality that uh, you know, we've identified. And that's not life science specific, that's uh, technology as well. Uh, so we've got some examples of technology companies that have, uh, you know, uh, produced similar types of results. Uh, so that's, that's it in, in a nutshell from me th um, this afternoon. Basically, we think the ASX 200 is going to uh, hit 4,800 by the end of the year. There was a lot of interest coming back into uh, technology and life science in particular. We think that's a, a result of the sector maturing. Um, have a look at the milestones that companies have set for themselves, take a core position, and then try and trade around those milestones. That's it for me. Thanks, Steve.